Hi Church, my name is Morgan, I'm part of our Manchester Central Campus and it's my privilege to bring a devotional thought to you this morning on this topic of faith and miracles. Um, when I was, uh, you know, just preparing for this, I just googled the definition of miracle and uh, the definition in Oxford Dictionary I've got on the screen here is a surprising and welcome event that is not explained by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. I think that summarises how we would all feel like what a miracle is, right? You know, it's this um, concept that we need something to happen, that we really want to happen, that science and natural uh, events and laws can't explain. And so we we attribute it and determine it to be God. Um, but I think we can often infer and place onto this idea of a miracle, something that from my experience and not necessarily what I see in the Bible is this idea that it's only a miracle if it happens instantly. And it's only a miracle if um, I don't have to put any hard work in. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to encourage you today that that's not necessarily the biblical example that we see. You know, there's an account in 2 Kings 5 of a man named Naaman, who was an influential uh, man and warrior in a, a place called Aram. So it wasn't Israel, it was close to Israel, um, a, a neighbouring region. Um, and he had leprosy. And so he, you know, it was an incurable disease at the time and he needed a, a miracle to be cured of his leprosy. Um, so he went to and heard about the prophet Elisha in Israel. So he went to his house and wanted a miracle. But Elisha didn't even meet him. Elisha sent a messenger to give him a message to say, go and wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. And you can see in, in 2 Kings uh, 5, chapter, uh, verse 11, how Naaman is annoyed that he didn't get this instant miracle. His, his words are, I thought that he would, he being Elisha, would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of leprosy. He wanted a fast, instantaneous healing where he didn't have to do anything. Uh, you know, I think we can often get caught into that trap as well. Uh, and actually, we need to put in some work. And I want to encourage you this morning that maybe your miracle isn't going to be found instantly. Maybe it's going to be found through some work on, on your behalf and it's not going to happen in a straightforward manner. You know, Jess and I, we um, were, my wife and I, we were uh, looking to buy a house sort of about 18 months ago. Uh, and we created a list of all these things that we wanted our house to look like. And we saw loads of sensible and pragmatic houses that were in our price range. Um, but we found this house that was like everything that was everything on our list that we were believing God for. But it was way out of our price range. So we believed and we submitted an offer that was like way below the asking price. And we were like, come on, God, this is everything on the list that we want our house to be. And lo and behold, we didn't get it. Um, and we were could have been like Naaman saying, but God, I thought this ticks everything on our list. We believe you're for us. We prayed for it and we wanted it instantly. But we didn't realize that God had a, a better journey for us, which was a, a journey of miracles, um, of experiencing his provision over the course of a six month period. Because actually... There was a, the house exactly the same layout, lots of the same period features of the house that we fell in love with, was two doors down and was was unsold, but needed a big renovation job. So we rolled up our sleeves. We did like what Naaman did, washed seven times in the river, and, and we put in that hard work over a six-month period. And we didn't just see one miracle, but we saw so many miracles of God coming through for us over that six-month period because we were prepared to go, you know what, maybe our miracle isn't instant, but maybe our miracle, you know, is going to be over a long drawn out period from things like meeting the right contractors to getting that house way below the price that we could have got it for it was a miracle season because we were prepared to to understand that miracles weren't just instant where we didn't have to put in work there were still miracles that were drawn out and where hard work was involved you know i want to encourage you that maybe to look again um, at some of the things that you're believing for and saying, you know what, God, is there some element of obedience that I need to have? Is there some hard work that I need to put in? And do I just need to be persistent in believing rather than just expecting it to be happen instantly, but actually trust and wait upon your timing? I hope that encourages you this morning, church. Uh, I'm just going to pray and, and, uh, and bless that you have a great day. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for our church. I thank you for our community. I thank you for your technology and being able to share you know around your word in in this sort of manner and god i pray for everyone who needs a miracle right now um, and i know god that even though you do have instant miracles for some people for those people whose miracle you want them to go on a journey i pray that you would explain that to them that you would give them the right steps that they need to take that you would give them the courage to stick it out and to put in the hard work where it needs to be put out um, and that you would illuminate through the power of your holy spirit where your miracle hand is at work 
Lord, I pray that you bless all of their days in Jesus' name. Amen.